Yvonne, would you lead us, please, in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I would like uh, to call this meeting to order and ask uh, Maria Luisa to call the roll, please. What happened to Alma Lou? Mr. Fernandez Guzman? Here. Ms. Gutierrez? Here. Mr. Evia? Mr. Evia is here. He's here. Uh, Mr. Holland? Here's Mr. Evia. He's on the phone. Mr. Lasarte? Mr. Malouf? Mr. Malouf? Mr. Martinez is going to be joining us via phone. Mr. Pago? Mr. Sanabria? Ms. Solar McKinley? Here. Mr. Wartman? Here. Vice Chair Fano? Chair Ferre? Do we have a quorum? We do. We do. Because Mr. Maloof is here, right? Um, Mr. Maloof, I saw him earlier. Declaration of Voting Conflicts. Ms. Leslie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if the members present, I, th I think we're also waiting on Mr. Maloof, but if anybody has a voting conflict, if you would note it for the record at this time. All right, seeing none, and Mr. Maloof just walked in the, in the door. Um, we now have citizens' comments. The only request that we have for citizens' comments is from Carlos Garcia, who is the co-chair um, of his organization, uh, Rollback Tolls. Mr. Garcia, the chair recognizes you. I don't think so. There's a little button on the side. Green button? No, it was on. It was on? Oh, there we go. You're on. Can you hear us? Okay, my name is Carlos Garcia, uh, Rollback Tolls, and uh, thank you for the opportunity today. Uh, basically, I wanted to uh, update the board on um, the, the communications that we've been putting out to the public regarding the 50%, the proposed 50% toll rate increase out to the public, and trying to reach uh, a lot of the people that MDX seems to, to be missing on a lot of these um, uh, important issues, um, and the regard to the uh, CPI uh, indexing. Um, what a lot of people are saying is, is that they understand that roads have to be paid for, but um, and nobody's expecting a free ride. I'm not expecting a free ride. My group isn't expecting a free ride. Nobody's expecting a free ride. We understand we have to pay. But what is being discussed, as opposed to in light of this 50% increase, which would put, in the eyes of a lot of people, an unjustifiable burden, financial burden, on an already burdened commuter in Miami-Dade County, you know, uh, other ideas are starting to float around. I am a board member of the Kendall Federation of uh, Homeowners Associations, and it um, passed a resolution just recently to explore alternative funding options that might uh, might be viable uh, as opposed instead of tolls. Um, uh, and we're actually putting out some surveys uh, online, and we actually have a phone number where you can call and leave a recorded comment picking either um, uh, a sales tax increase of a half a percent uh, as one option dedicated here in Miami-Dade County, a increase in the gas tax um, uh, that would replace a funding uh, for here in Dade County, or option C, they, that they might be happy with the present tolling system and they think that it works fine. But we do want the people to voice in on this uh, conversation. Um, my group, and, and I am personally uh, involved in getting uh, the word out about what MDX is planning, and I believe, oh, by the way, the phone number, in case you are interested, is 305-814-7104. Again, 305-814-7104. It's just a number that people can call in and leave a comment. We have the ability 
to forward you the comments um, that we'll be more than we'll be willing to do. Um, but uh, we are very concerned about the 50%. Uh, we, we think that it's, you know, the combination of the 50% increase, the per mile toll rate uh, from 11 cents to either the 16 cents or the 17 cent option, the open road tolling uh, and the CPI indexing is really a triple whammy on the, uh, on the commuters of this county. I understand that, you know, you have a champagne taste for, uh, for a lot of projects, but, um, you know, really the, the people have a ripple budget, not even a beer budget. And um, we feel that it's excessive uh, at this time for this board to be imposing uh, such a high rate uh, on the people. And uh, that's, uh, you know, basically what our group is, is doing. We have an online petition, like I said. Um, I personally, I want to say one thing, one more thing, and I'll, and I'll finish. I w went firsthand to a company, a friend of mine, who had some toll violations he had to take care of in the court system. And I will tell you, and I don't know if you've heard it, but the unintended consequences of the tolling system in this county is, is astronomical. There are people, and everybody needs to be responsible, I understand that, but there are people in this county that are, have uh, violations, losing their licenses, suspensions, even getting arrested for a suspended license because they didn't pay a toll violation. And we feel that the other systems, like the gas tax or a sales tax, would eliminate all those unintended consequences that presently the toll by plate system and the sun pass system um, are causing on the public. And that's, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Um, I, I think um, I would just like to remind you that we have uh, advertised in the Miami Herald, the Adio Las Americas, in, in full, very, very visible, knowledgeable, I mean, very visible, uh, seeable uh, ads that we're having a series of public hearings. Uh, we've had two. At the last one, there were six people. Um, I, I would advise you to really get your people um, yeah. all over and, and your fellow organizations that have strong feelings, and I respect you for it. And I want to remind you that at one time when Pinellas was the mayor of, of, uh, of uh, Miami-Dade County, I was the chair of the penny sales tax that was defeated uh, because I figured that that was a better way to go than tolls. It didn't work. The people that didn't want to pay, do it, they then did a half a cent. We've had a disaster. But we'll talk about this because we're going to have a full public hearing here sometime in March, and I'm sure we'll be seeing and talking to you. Right, but right. we have four more meetings left, right? Yeah. We have two more meetings advertised. Three of you include the day of the board meeting, which will be a public hearing. Right. So Thank you very much. We look forward to okay. seeing you. At I the hope moment. more people come because I believe I that it's the task of MDX not roll back tolls to properly inform the public about yeah, this. Yeah, I think please do and please bring as many people to these public hearings as you can. Okay. Thank, thank you, sir. All right. We're now um, on the approval of uh, summary minutes. Uh, you have the minutes. You've looked at them. Is there Second. Any, it's been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? All those of, in favor of approval of the summary minutes say aye. Aye. Opposed? It's passed unanimous. Executive Director's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Board members, a uh, lot of meetings between the last board meeting and, to, and today. Uh, we continue to brief MPO board members. Uh, updating them on the State Road 836 and 112 ORT conversions in 2014. As I just stated, we held the first two public reviews at FIU and in Hialeah. We have upcoming meetings in Cutler Bay, right here in Central Dade at the Salvation Army, and then the final public hearing will be here at MDX on March 26th at the board meeting. Um, to answer some of the, the, the ways we've gotten the word out, not only did we advertise in newspapers and put in, uh, uh, um, inserts in different publications, we also advertise in community newspapers. We've done radio spots and television spots simply stating, go out and get informed. We've also got the presentation on what will be occurring and the process is on our website and it is available for, for the public to see. In uh, addition, the Miami Herald and other Yeah, have carried the covered. stories have carried the stories. So yes, we want more people to show up. We want to hear them. We want to understand what the issues are. 
I, at the end of the day, we do need to provide the infrastructure to move this community and continue the jobs growth in this community. So it's, it's one or the other. Um, early in January, the uh, IBTTA uh, held its board of directors meeting here in, Jan in, in Miami. And many of you may have seen the, uh, the, the, the piece that I published on, on emergency management and what tolls and toll facilities are. And this isn't about tolls or gas tax. We're all transportation providers. We all are in the job of moving people and goods. Tolling, taxes, property taxes, or the likes are just the means to an end. We all provide transportation services, and that's what our mission is. To that end, the IBTTA has launched, has launched an official uh, campaign called Moving America Forward to start getting the dialogue more to what the infrastructure does for America and less about, you know, whether it's a toll, a user fee, whether it's going to be this or that, because at the end of the day, we need to get people from here to there, and we need to keep this economy moving. So that was officially launched at, in Washington. It was officially launched here in Miami with that board meeting, but they're going to be doing it around the country. And to M Mayor Ferre's comment at the, at the workshop before, managed lanes. Yeah, managed lanes is an American phenomenon, and it was created here out of an evolution of high-occupancy vehicle lanes, HOV lanes. But what's happening is... In America, we figured out that it's not about the toll lane or the managed lane. It's about moving people. So we've introduced that transit component, just like we did here on 995 Express. Well, guess what? In Europe, now the Europeans are looking at that managed lane pheno pheno phenomena because in urban areas, the publics are demanding it. We need to be move people and goods, and our capacity is limited in urbanized areas. So we are challenged to get better use of our assets in, uh, in all ways. So that, that, that has been launched. You'll be seeing a lot more of it, and, um, and I'll be sharing a lot of that information. To that end as well, we met recently at FDOT, the Turnpike Enterprise, Orlando, Tampa, and Leeway, and we were talking about interoperability. There in MAP 21 in the new transportation bill, there is a mandate that by 2016, we must be nationally interoperable, which means if you have a Sun Pass, you should be able to drive anywhere in the country seamless through any toll system. Well, there are many efforts to get that going, but I'm happy to say that in Florida, not only is Florida interoperable, but we announced that by July 1st, we're going to be interoperable with North Carolina and right after with Georgia. But that's not the only thing. We're working with the, the uh, interoperable group in, in, in the Easy Pass area, which are the 23, 24 states in the Northeast. And we're also working with Texas and Oklahoma to make sure that we're interoperable, interoperable there. We will be getting the word out that this interoperability is going to happen by region. It's already underway. The technology providers are cooperating tremendously. And the agencies are looking at what is right, not only for the driver, but the customer, the trucker, who does interstate commerce. So we're moving forward on that. We just held our, our Team Florida, Florida Transportation Commission meeting in Orlando. And it's interesting because the themes we were all, all the directors were asked to give an update of our programs, what's coming up. And I wrote down a theme because all of us, we didn't talk about what we were working on, but we all had a common theme. We all run urbanized expressway systems, and we are all looking at how to move people and goods using various modes. We all face the same challenge. The majority overwhelming traffic is single, single occupant vehicles. Our capacity is limited. How do we move more people and goods? Tampa's looking at bus toll lanes. Orlando is looking at changing their legislation to mirror Miami-Dade expressways that allows them to get involved in multimodal facilities or multimodal, uh, uh, intermodal facilities or multimodal modes. Um, so that was a common theme. So it's very appropriate when we're talking managed lanes and the, people of, uh, uh, the movement of people and goods. Uh, and then last night, finally, a little, a little plug in for our small business uh, program. I was invited, along with uh, uh, Secretary Pago, his staff, and others in the county, to be, to be a part of a panel at the National Action Network. And this is a network that is uh, chaired by Bishop Victor Curry. And the panel discussion, the title was Economic Development, Job Opportunities, Creation and Training Strategic Partnerships for Viable Solutions. The folks on the, on the panel was Miami-Dade County's 
uh, mayor's office, uh, Russell Benford and Jack Osterholt were there. The Port of Miami was there. The, um, the Beacon Council was there. The South Florida Workforce and the Dolphins were there. And it was about job creation. And it was interesting because there was big policy discussions about job creation. I, I made this analogy uh, uh, last night to a person I spoke. If we, I like marbles. So if, if you look at marbles, MDX is a marble, DOT is a bowling ball. But we both have the same goal, and we are nimble, and we've been able to effectuate our small business and local business programs. We're proud to say that over 30% of every dollar spent stays here in Miami with a small local business defined. I think if you combine both of them, it's over 40%. Um, not only that, we have created programs with the universities and the colleges to train people in the workforce. It makes no sense to say we are advocates of small businesses and then the folks can't get to work because they're not trained in those small in, in those fields. So we're also paying for that. And I thank you. And I'll put a plug in for our small business workshop, May 16th. It'll be the 10th annual. And uh, I am sure it'll be well attended. And thank you, Helen, for that. And thank you, board, for pushing that. So that concludes my report for today, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, any questions of the executive director? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I have a couple of questions, and it's on the what Javier said about uh, disseminating the information and what the gentleman said on the on the rollback tolls. Um, have we done the, the talk show circuit, um, asking people or telling people about the program so that they do we, have the opportunity to attend? We've, done, we've run radio spots on multiple radio stations, but we, done, we have not done the radio circuit. Okay. okay. And, and the only um, concern I have about the Miami Herald uh, um, yeah. ad is that it takes you to the website. Mm -hmm. um, there is an inordinate amount of people that are on our lines that are not computer savvy. Correct. And that is a concern. Um, I don't want them at the end of the day to be able to come back and say, oh, we didn't know about it and we don't know how to get into, you know, we don't have a computer, so we don't. And the information on the, because I saw the information, you know, I saw the ad. The information on the ad basically takes you to um, the website. So I just put it out there so that if you, if you could comment. do something about that and, oh. and be able to, so that we don't get any pushback yeah. later and say, well. I think, you know, I think she's absolutely this, correct. This. I think we, we need to, uh, if we're going to advertise again, modify this so that it goes beyond just The portion going of the population the, that. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I think we ought to do. We ought to go on the talk on the talk show circus, even though I hate to do it. But I think we need to do that. Ms. Gutierrez. Thank you. Um, following up on Member McKenzie. You need your green button. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, following up on what you said, I think it's important if there's still two more meetings to go, two more uh, open meetings to go that the campaign that promotes that these meetings are occurring and the purpose of them be addressed. Yeah. And I understand that maybe the campaign is based on radio commercials, but people tend to ignore radio commercials most of the time because that's the time they take a break to do something else. Um, if you go in and you do that PR campaign with talk shows, you will be able to actually not only address the fact that you are having, having these presentations and the purpose for them and voice your opinion, but at the same time you're advocating what it is you're doing. So I think it's really important, but it's, the importance of this is that it does get engaged and activated now, right. not after the fact. Yeah, the intent because I think the, it's yeah. very important to also inform the public. Mm -hmm. There is a very big divide between a gas tax, a penny tax, and a user fee. I am only going to pay a toll if I get on this expressway. And it's not going up 50%, but it is going up and because there is new gantry. So it's very important to explain that. So if I choose to pay because I want to get on, then I pay. So if I don't want to pay, but because a penny is everybody pays. And a gas tax is every time you pump, you pay 
but I'm not using it, so why should I pay? So that needs to be explained, the difference here. And you can do that on a radio program, but you cannot do that on a radio pre-recorded commercial. So really, I think we need to I hear you and get a I, little direction. Change. I hear you, and, and what we were trying to achieve was to get the five dates out so that people would attend the meetings. We also did an email blast to SunPass customers as well. We worked closely with the Turnpike and work? got it out. Did that work I got my I got my notice, and I, I know a lot of people who got their notice, but people didn't I show up. I haven't gotten it. No. Have you? No. Oh. Okay. Um, any other comments on the uh, – yes, Mr. Wartman. Uh, two things. Number one, regarding the public hearings. Okay, uh, our variable message signs. Can we put a simple, very short thing there uh, the day of or the That's day before that says a public hearing, something to that effect? That would hit the users of it directly. We could do okay, that. Okay, and that shouldn't cost us anything to put up there. Well, I, you know, I, I think, that, that, let me tell you why I think it's important. I think we need to be able to say that we've done everything done within everything. our power. Exactly. And that we haven't spared anything to let the uh, public know that we're doing this. So that when, because otherwise, I'm going to tell you, uh, there are going to be a lot of very upset people after Ew. March 23rd. But, pushback. so we have to really document that we've done everything within our power. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Chair, I'll just one real quick comment. Go ahead. It, it, I'd like to echo what um, what uh, Ms. Gutierrez has has mentioned. The ra the radio spots inform the public, traveling and otherwise, of the meetings. The circuit actually starts a conversation. Right. Yep. So you're, you're prompting and promoting and inviting two-way conversation. That's where you're going to get your data points, I think, to really get a, take a pulse of where the community absolutely. is. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. All right. Any further comments? Mr. Warman. Yeah. This is regarding, I guess, uh, I guess the meeting we had last Thursday, Friday, Team Florida FTC. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time, but I assume it is. Measuring mobility, asking for that to be uh, put on the agenda for the operations committee to look at. All right. So, in other words, um, there's a request uh, now that that the operating committee uh, look into the issue of speed yeah, yeah. on highways because it's a it's an issue that uh, Mr. Wartman requested the FTC to look into, and the and the secretary, in effect, turned it down. Mm -hmm. said that it would not be on the agenda this year. And so I think it's appropriate for us to discuss it because it does affect the, the general traveling public. It's not, it doesn't really concern MDX, but I think MDX should at least listen to what Mr. Wartman has to say. Okay. Listen. Okay? And then we can take it uh, uh, one step at a time. Anything else? Okay. Uh, we're now in the um, general counsel's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to be very brief because I know we have a very full agenda today. Uh, I wanted to mention that uh, Francine Steelman and I both attended the annual meeting of the Transportation Research Board in Washington, D.C. this uh, month. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, many of the issues that you talked about in your workshop in terms of uh, Platooning vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication and driverless vehicles were highlighted in a number of sessions there. Um, the new chair of the Emerging Technologies Committee with the Legal Resources Group uh, happens to be a professor from the University of Michigan and works in that area of, of driverless vehicles. And so uh, we're moving that way. He sits on the executive committee with me, and uh, one of the things that we're looking at with the Tort Liability Committee is some of the legal issues uh, surrounding those issues with driverless vehicles. So it's a very timely discussion. Um, just to very briefly update you on the ETC litigation, there's not a whole lot to tell you at this point. We do have a um, case management conference scheduled before the judge on February 11th. So hopefully by the February board meeting, we may have more information about when there might be a, a proposed trial date. We have... Uh, this month had meetings both with the Sureties Council and with ETC and their council relating to disentanglement processes. Uh, we didn't do a whole lot more than issue identification, but I am pleased to report that it was a fairly civil discussion, and so we all have some tasks to complete towards 
uh, getting some resolution to how we're going to completely handle the disentanglement, but we're working in that direction. So that's really all I have to report on, on the ETC litigation. Any questions? Any questions? Any comments? All right, we move on then to the MPO, uh, Ms. Gutierrez. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, there's a lot of exciting things happening at the MPO in the coming month. Uh, there is a presentation that I know that uh, you probably welcome and watch of I-395, their status report, uh, very important. There's also some other things that uh, we've been championing uh, to make sure that it happens is the UM pedestrian overpass. Uh, there's been a lot of fatalities there by the UM, kids crossing the street and being clipped, and that's forthcoming. Um, there was a situation of a little gap of money, and I think the, they've closed that gap. Also, something else that's uh, very interesting are some studies that they're doing, but one that I thought was pretty exciting is the downtown intermodal transit pedestrian mall. I think that that's one to watch because it can create a nice little hub right there and change the fabric of downtown Miami. Uh, there's also another study that's going on that has to do with the freight study and additional transit option. Actually, that one just engages more of preparing the road map for bus rapid transit. And, and almost completing with my report is very exciting for Bruno Barrero. He was elected as the Southeast Florida Transit Transportation Council Vice Chair. So. And with that, I can close my report. Uh, any statements? All right. We now move on to the Treasurer's report. Mr. Sanabi. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, we, as some of you who were at the meeting know, uh, yesterday we had a very lengthy and vocal meeting, and some decisions were made that were um, of sound logic and uh, in consensus with the Board. I'll let Marie carry on with the uh, actual numbers and data of the Treasurer's Report, but I can tell you it's excellent and very proud of the work that, that everybody's done and, and Mr. Rodriguez and Marie and staff is, again, a, a meeting doesn't pass by, I don't say that you guys are great. Thank, Thank you. you Go much. ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Scenario. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on it. Um, we, most of everybody was here yesterday on, on the numbers. I think the revenue numbers really show that we completed the, revenue, the building cycles. We're making progress on that area. Um, our expenses are pretty much coming in online to where our budgeted numbers are expected to be. So all in all, there's no surprises on the finance side. Um, I do want to mention that last week, Alfred Lagatis and I did a tour of the system with Fitch rating agencies and um, we showed them the projects, and they were very impressed on the completion of the projects that um, we had in our, our, our last official statement and how we completed it, and we completed it on time, some of it under budget. Um, the mobility was there. They saw an enormous amount of improvement on the uh, west end of 836. They saw all the improvement on the interchange that we were participating on that project. On 874, um, they you know, were here two and a half years ago, three years ago, when that project was under construction. And again, they, they very significant mobility um, that they saw on that. And um, the credit rating agencies, folks, they, they've covered this account for a number of years. Um, they are transportation professionals. They go um, to transportation cities all over the country. And I think that um, they are very impressed on how we have continued to deliver projects. And, and I think uh, uh, their comments were well received. And, and they thank the board. Um, for putting forth the projects and keeping to their commitment on the policies. Um, so I just you know, wanted to let the board know that the rating agencies do appreciate um, the work that's being done here. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Marie. Also, uh, I'd like to add that Steve Andrick has done a phenomenal job in the collections of uh, unpaid tolls. Uh, it has skyrocketed in terms of collections, and it's really helped the budget. So, Steve, thanks very much for all your work. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. All right, so any questions, any statements? We now move to the consent agenda, which is item eight, travel approval. Is there a motion? Move it. Move is it. Is there a second? It's been second. moved and seconded. Further discussion? I think we have Robert Howland and Luis Martinez online. Is that correct? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, good evening. So uh, Mr. Martinez seconded the motion. And, that is correct. Uh, uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, so it passes. Now, 
I would like to move to the regular agenda and item, uh, C, uh, I'm sorry, four, but we're going to move C out of place because Randy has to catch a plane and Mr. Maloof has to leave in 30 minutes or 35 minutes. So, uh, Randy, uh, Actually, my, uh, Pam will read, the, read it into the record. Anyway. Pam, why don't you then get us started? Um, we're going to start with C, 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 C. Item C. Um, Public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is item 9C. This is approval of the resolution 1301 authorizing the issuance of MDX toll system refunding revenue bonds. This is series 2013A. Uh, it's in an aggregate amount not to exceed $320 million. And uh, this was endorsed by the um, Budget and Finance Committee yesterday. After you, the board has a discussion on this, this will be an item that will need to be open for public hearing. Uh -huh. All right, Randy. I cannot hear. Turn it on. Hold on, Louis. There you go. The, the light was on. Uh, hear it better? Yeah, I'll, I'll lean into it a little more. Thank you. Okay. We're, we're looking to refund all or a portion of three bond issues, the 2001A, 2002s, and 2004Bs. All of them are looking at generating savings in approximately 9.4% in the current markets. That's approximately $28 million in present value terms. We're looking to structure those savings in an upfront fashion so that we can maintain coverages at the board level, recommended level of 1.4. Uh, I'm ready for any questions if, if you have any. All right. Are there any questions at this time? Yeah. Ms. Very smart Ms. move. Very good recommendation on proceeding to make this to make this change now. Can you give us a little bit of indication of the time frame? The time frame. Time frame. Uh, we approve today. To bring it and to what host. happens next? Oh well, I'm sorry. Uh, the timeline is such that in two weeks or next week we start our interviews with the rating agencies, as was discussed before. We, we got some special dispensation because of the acceleration and the timing of their overwhelming caseload themselves that will provide the official statements to them after the reviews. They, they were just here. They're pretty comfortable with the facilities, as, as you heard. So we got a little bit of extra time that way. That way we're not being slowed down. We're looking at doing that and then providing those documents to the underwriters who are selected so that they can have two weeks to review the document, ask questions, and make any comments or changes. Then we'll look to be pricing the end of February, the very end of February, the first part of March with the closing in March. So all, all the monies will be in place and the escrows will be set aside to pay off these bonds by the March time frame. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Yep. Go ahead. What was the, the discount rate that you used on that net present value savings? Just out of curiosity. Now, the net present value savings is based off your actual cost of funds, which is a little bit higher than what your arbitrage yield is because the federal government discounts that because that's what they set the threshold for earnings on your investments. There's always a little gig, but it's around 3.5%. That's, pre that's pretty amazing, isn't it? All right. Um, Mr. Uh, Luz uh, uh, Ritter is here, and uh, if you would step forward, uh, he's our bond counsel, and uh, Pam, why don't you introduce him? And Members, uh, Lewis Ryder with Squire Sanders Dempsey is our bond counsel, and they've just done a tremendous job of getting an awful lot of very complicated documents together in a relatively short period of time, and we appreciate that very much. We've had a lot of help from the authority. And, and co is your co-general counsel with you? He is with me here. Doug Seaton. And we went through an, an explanation of all the documents yesterday. We could do it again, or if anybody has any questions, we could. No, no, no. We... <laughs> I figured you'd have one of those was enough. <laughs> hey, that's, that's where we have committees. We had the committee, went through it very thoroughly. Now, are there any questions of Mr. Ritter at this time? If not, just congratulations. Congratulations right for an and unbelievable and job. Well done. Thank you. It's a pleasure for us. Great, great work on a great team. Huh? 
all the way around, especially our bond council. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. All right, now now we have to go to the public hearing. So now, uh, Pam? Um, Mr. Chair, at this time, uh, if you will open the public hearing for comment, anyone is that's here is available to make comment on the bond issue. Is there, is there anybody in the public that wishes to address MDX on this? This is a public hearing. Again, is there anybody that wishes to address us on this at this public hearing? Hearing none, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Second. Moved and seconded. Is there further discussion on the issue? What is the will of Move this it. board? Move it. It's been moved by... It's been moved and seconded. Is there a further discussion? Yvonne moved it. Carlos seconded. Is there further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. It passes again unanimously. And I want to take this, this uh, time to thank Gonzalo Sanabria for his uh, ability and patience in, t in taking us through a very complicated and uh, uh, emotionally wrought uh, process. So thank you. We're now on item uh, 9A, which is an MDX procurement uh, contract RFQ 10-01. Uh, Ms. Thank, Leslie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is an approval of uh, one-year term renewal for um, materials and engineering testing contracts, uh, one for Nodarcy Associates and one for Professional Services Industries, Inc., and uh, I believe that Mr. Lurigatos, if you have any questions, can address this for you. On this item that went through the proper committee and was approved unanimously. If not, is there a motion I'll on item this, 9A moved? Second. By Mr. Malou, second. By Mr. Sanabria, further discussion on item 9A. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Is that a no? Aye. Oh, an aye. Uh, so it passes aye. unanimously. All right, we're now on item 9C, which is approval of MDX resolution 13-01. 9B. 9B, 9B, 9B. Approval of First Amendment to swap agreement with J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. And Mr. Chairman, we, we can have a short or a long, whatever it's your pleasure of the board and yourself, uh, whatever it is that you want. Um, okay, uh, Marie, you want to just give us a brief? Just very high level, we were able to renegotiate some of the uh, terms in our swap current swap agreement with J.P. Morgan, who um, took over the assignment from Bear Stern. The two major changes on the swap agreement is that we were able to negotiate favorable terms on the collateral posting as a higher threshold for MDX. That was number one. And uh, secondly, we included um, language that explicitly states that we were able to post a letter of credit. Um, so those are the changes in our swap agreement. All right. I'd like to at this time recognize Gonzalo Sanabri again for his insistence that there was money on the table that should come to MDX. And through that, I think uh, I want to, again, thank uh, City, uh, the, 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 the Citibank Group, and, uh, of course, J.P. Morgan, uh, uh, who, who really came uh, forward with uh, also an impressive uh, saving. So thank you, Mr. Sanabria, and thank you to the to the uh, uh, banks that, that, that came forward with a with that. Which, which, Mr. Which, Chairman, the underwriters that uh, were holding the swap came to the table with open hands and compromise and uh, cooperation. And as a result, we were able to save somewhere around 74 to $87 million in collateral that we would have had to post. So it is nothing short of a phenomenal achievement by all concerned. Well, well so, done. Thank you. Is there a, I'll let, I'll, I'll, no, I, I want to give Gonzalo the privilege of, of moving it. <laughs> Moved, seconded Back by Yvonne. <laughs> is there further discussion? All those in favor of item 9B, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Passes. We've done now A, B, C, and we're now at D. Mr. Chair, item 9D is uh, to approve resolution 1302. This is to authorize uh, MDX to utilize general fund reserves in amount not to exceed $5.8 million to defeat certain, defeat certain Series 2010 bonds. And Randy's going to speak to that as well. Mr. Chairman, on this item, uh, it, the, the long and the short, the short story of it is it will help us with our coverage ratio. 
Um, so that's basically why we're doing this. It will help us maintain the 1.4 or better ratio. So and it was heard by the Finance and Budget Committee. We heard it, yes, And sir. it was passed unanimously. Yes, sir. Then move yes, it. Sir. Randy, uh, for the record. Uh, after reviewing the, the coverage levels, this combined with the savings analysis allowed us to have the savings get to 1.4 for the time frame to allow for the oncoming uh, recognition of tolls from the 836 electronic tolls. It gives us a little bit more time cushion in case anything was to happen in the process, either uh, a glitch in the collection systems or a delay in it being implemented. It gives us about a six months to a year cushion. So that's why we're recommending doing it and keeping our toll coverage at 1.4 at this time. Much, uh, moved by Yvonne Soler McKinley, second by Car Carlos. Uh, question. Yes, question. Okay. So, can you expand on the divide? You said on the previous, on item C, there's a savings of $28 million. We're now going to take the 5.8 out of that 28, follow, not out, out of that 28, out of a, a, a out of the 320. So, explain to me on that 28. Is it paper realized savings, or are you yielding anything that is coming back to the agency in monies that can be used? This, okay. It's, okay. I, this, the members uh, of the no, audience, I, I, I can members answer of the, the audience now think we have all of this money, mm -hmm. and basically what we're doing is a move to save money that would essentially be expended because we owe it because of everything that has been done. So can you please lay the ground so we fully understand. We didn't realize new money coming for us to spend. It's not new money. It's not new money. Exactly. It's that, that's famous. all I want to clear because there's a lot of money here that that's being thrown around and just <laughs> exactly. It's just well, clarification. All right. Further Very questions. Well, further. Randy, go ahead. Exactly. Okay. Got a better percentage. That's all. What what we're looking at is trying right now our coverage levels are below the levels that they need to be to have our credit that we currently enjoy. And what we, our credit levels really need 1.4 to 1.5, preferably 1.5 to 1.6, but we have a lower threshold of 1.4. We were experiencing in the 120s. Now, 120 or below is a default threshold. So we didn't have any extra money for cushion when we usually experience. And historically, we've been running at 150 to 160. This savings, it's, it's coming in, and it will be essentially used in the capital program just as it was originally planned. I think for the purpose of the audience, the best way to, to, to draw a comparison here is we refied the house at a lower rate, and there's no cash back. Okay, it'll be simple to understand. <laughs> but, over time, but over time, that savings is used for cash flow and debt that service. That's, the That's it. Clarification that Are I there need. further questions? Thanks. Are there any other questions or statements on this? If not, uh, is there? A, uh, we already have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed? Thank you. Uh, it passes unanimously. Um, we're now at the end of the uh, regular agenda and informational items procurement report. The reports are in your in your packet. The the date of the small business program to hold the date, May 16th. Uh, we're looking at an area in north in the northwest part of the county, closer to the Grantney this time, because we've been trying to go get around the county and holding these workshops. All right. <clears throat> then, uh, since we're about to close, let me give you my my very brief report. Uh, first of all, as you will see in your packet, there's a letter from Rebecca Sosa and Linda Bell. Uh, I thought it was important for us to recognize them, and so we send them flowers in your name, and this is in recognition of that. So uh, I, th I think uh, I have now, tomorrow I'm going to be visiting um, Commissioner Barbara Jordan, and then I have to visit Commissioner Montesim, so, which means that within, by the end of this week, I will have visited with all 13 of members of the commission. And I think it's important that we maintain a very good rapport with the county commission. 
I think we're off to a good start. Um, many of you have obviously good relationships, but I think it's important that the chair uh, in particular stay in touch with all of the 13 members of the county commission. I, so I have done that. <clears throat> the um, FTC meeting uh, in Orlando was a not, not a, and a very eventful meeting, uh, except that we're about to start the legislative session. And I think uh, that there's a lot of fireworks that we think is not going to happen, but I'm afraid to tell you that I think we are. Uh, fortunately, we have Fausto Gomez, and we have to stay very alert, but I ask all of you to give us to keep your ears open and anything that you think uh, needs attention, please please uh, move on it very quickly. Time, timing is of the essence. I would yes. like to ask you a question, uh, Mr. Chairman, because I was at the meeting and I heard uh, the Secretary say that there's a central transportation agency in, in formation and that that was, the, you know, they were going to regionalize um, the expressway authority. That's, if, if, I, if I could get a little bit more explanation, yeah, if, if that's that's, a, if that's, that. that's the governor's initiative, and the governor's initiative comes from the Plato, the Plato, como se llama, the Plato Institute, and the Reason Foundation, which I don't mean Plato. I mean the the Plato, yeah, Swingers Club. You should know, right? So. So it's, it's the Cato Institute. I'm sorry, I didn't mean, I didn't mean Plato. Cato Institute and the, uh, and the Reason Foundation are very big on regional governments. So I think the governor is looking for a way of regionalizing these expressway authorities. It's, it was specifically done for the Orlando area because there they have three counties that are involved, and so it's specifically meant for them. But I think there's more to it than that, but that's just a personal opinion that is not any inside information. Okay? What is it that they're doing? So that's the thing. Well, it means that, a, that the Orlando entity can now deal, is responsible for three counties. For, it's for as if they said MDX has to take care of Monroe and Broward County. Yeah, that, that's the proposal in Central Florida for the Regional Transportation Authority, is to go to the neighboring counties, I think it's Seminole and Lake, yeah. to create authorities up there. And it's simply because funding, gas tax funding, is barely, barely covering maintenance. And that's the reality. And that's going down and down, and the more electric cars and the more hybrids that come out, and I'm about to buy a hybrid, electric hybrid, and all that kind of stuff. That means there's, there's less and less gas taxes available. Right. Um, so uh, I think we need to keep our eyes open. Lastly, I want to tell you that thank you for those of you that did make it uh, to, the, uh, to the workshop. Uh, here's the conclusion. Uh, we're going to come back to the, uh, to the board uh, with a request that we go into a strategic plan. Uh, we do that every five years. The last one was five years ago. We really should have done that last year, but we, we didn't get into it. It will be six years. But we need to, the, it, co it coincides with the MPO five-year plan, which, which is the bringing up to the 2040 level. And uh, I'm going to uh, recommend that uh, three committees be established and that we're going to meet in, committee, in subcommittees first. One is technical. The other one is projects and systems, projects, specific projects and systems. And the third is financing and project delivery. Uh, if you have any interest, I mean, I obviously uh, w will appoint who I feel can best serve in each one of these committees. <clears throat> but uh, if you have a specific interest, please, pl please, uh, please, uh, please talk to, uh, to Javier. Uh, these committees will be functioning. I expect, I would hope. That, that this project would be over within six months so that by June sometime we can have our new strategic plan and uh, hopefully that'll, that'll, work all, that'll work well. Then we'll have a, a final meeting of the full board to adapt or amend or reject or whatever it is that we want to do as a board on the strategic plan. Luisa Hamil, fortunately, uh, were able to, through HNTB, to be able to get his services as in the past 
to lead us through. He did a wonderful job today. I've asked for his words to be uh, sent to you. You will see in front of you the maps that we used and a, an HNTB uh, document, uh, their, their, their monthly report which it says, express success, manage lanes, keep San Diego motorists moving. We're on to something big. This is a very, very important, manage lanes is a major, major break, American breakthrough. It's an American technology. We heard about the new technology that's coming along and about the financial alternatives. The most important thing to me is the people we had in the audience today. We had some of the major developers that will be developing major projects in Miami-Dade County in the audience today, and I thank them for being present. And that's really who I wanted uh, at this meeting. And uh, hopefully this will uh, have uh, uh, dividends. Uh, and I thank you, and I think uh, I've made it in this meeting in 45 minutes. Is there anything else to be discussed? Uh, it's a it's just a personal privilege to serve with Salar McKinley and Al Maloof, and I just want to make sure that you are aware of that and appreciate it as well. And you and I go back a long ways, probably over 20 years, so thanks. Uh, we're, we are going to be, uh, Yvonne and Al, uh, at the next board meeting, which, as you can see from this, is, is uh, on the 26th, pardon what day is it? It isn't here. Next board meeting is February, Next board meeting is February 26th. No, you won't. No, you won't. Please, this is going to be this is going to be dedicated to you and uh, Maloof. Yes. Well, to you, you and Mr. Maloof. Yeah. You put. You put a, I want nothing to do with Mr. Al, I'm sorry. You're out. <laughs> pictures, Yvonne. <laughs> We've got pictures, Yvonne. <laughs> We're going to have a plaque. You only get one plaque. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. We stand adjourned.